You've tuned into another episode of 420 Grams on NewsClick.in. Now, close to a month back, India were handed their second World Cup, and by that I mean our uh, hosting rights to our second World Cup. Because truth be told, our car is now there. So, come 2020, and India will be hosting the Women's Under 17 World Cup. And in studio with us today are two members of the Women's Senior Team who've had a pretty successful 2019 so far. Aditi Johan, goalkeeper of the Women's Team, thank you so much for joining us. And also Dali. Chibar, set piece specialist of the women's team and uh, in case you watched that goal versus Nepal at the SAF Championship, you know she can score from 20 kilometers far away. So in other words, <laughs> if there's a game happening between Delhi and Gurgaon, you know she can score from Delhi, right? Also in studio is our co-host of 420 Grams, Siddhant Annie and also senior journalist from Bangalore, Sharda Ugra joining us on Skype. So it's a full house of course and rightfully so because uh, all the right noises are being made about the women's game. Uh, uh, close to about 90 Games so far yeah. in 2019. I'm not going to say what you won fifth SAF championship, you're reaching the Olympic qualifiers second round. Just the fact that you played 19 games so far should be celebrated, right? Aditi? It should be. Uh, considering uh, the number of matches we've played in the previous years, uh, I think this is the most that we've played in the past three, four months. And uh, and it's good, and we've showed the results of uh, getting, like, we've always, I mean, I've always talked about the requirement of exposure, playing international matches, um, and we've proved why this was, why the exposures were important, and we've got the result of that, so. Great to have that, and it's important that uh, this thing continues and shouldn't stop here. Um, I firmly believe that we have a lot of potential, um, and we can reach even greater heights if this continues. You know, they always say there's no practice like match practice. Over the Definitely. course of these 19 games, how yeah. have you seen your game uh, improve or grow? I think the improvement has been a lot. If we talk about the combinational play of the team or we talk about individual uh, players' performance, I think it has been immense because playing uh, with teams like uh, Romania and Turkey and playing with some good teams like Myanmar and traveling to Hong Kong and playing the international friendlies, I think the growth has been a lot in terms of um, the combinational play of the team or the individual performances. Hmm. So what is it like when you're not a part of the national team setup. What do you guys do then? Where do you go to play? Come to 420 uh, grams. Music <laughs> <on laughs> got in. <laughs> I just want to get a sense of what is the level of involvement on a day-to-day -day basis with the sport for women. Uh, and you guys are sort of going against the grain anyway because it's not uh, Delhi is not a place that produces elite-level footballers since Arjun Pandit. So. <laughs> So a little bit about how your how your uh, setup is uh, on a daily basis. So personally, what uh, happens, like what 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 my life has been like, it has always been like get up in the morning, train because you you I have never had girls to play with, and it was like get go get up and train because I wanted to do it, and then go to school, go to college, and come back, and it has always been like managing education and sports both on the same hand. And with national team, it's like you're getting a lot of matches and you're staying there, and the main focus is that, but. The main focus is football, but here when we are back home, that main focus, our main focus is like diverted into a lot of other things. Because considering you come from Delhi, you cannot like you know it's it's a it's very hard to just concentrate on sports because that is not really something that is supported in a state like Delhi. Hmm. So Sharda, from where you are following this, uh, you suppose this year you could say could be that year that uh, maybe we're going to see a massive change in the women's sport, or probably is the right push it is needed. Probably not there where you want it to be, but it's. You know, the steps are there and they're climbing those steps slowly but surely. Yeah, I think it's extraordinary that suddenly out of nowhere, you know, these 19 matches turned up, you know. So someone at the AIFF is doing something really important uh, and, and, and putting the fact that match participation and practice and uh, competition is very important for all kinds of athletes. This is one of my favorite bugbear sort of topics. I think what the women's, uh, next year, the, the women's uh, under-17 World Cup will do is this whole conversation about what uh, is there for the women footballers in the country. It's a, it, it is a big sport in schools, you know, soccer is played, soccer, football, whatever is played in all kinds of schools in uh, because it's an easy sport for a large number of you. You put 20 people on a field, you can, you can do that. Uh, but what they do after that, once they sort of develop a, a liking for it, that is what that conversation I think is is what will happen when the under when the under seventeen uh, football World Cup happens. And it's great to see uh, both Aditi and Dalima here talking about them because you know you they, they, they have to be out there. Um, you know, DAIFF has to treat them like sort of mascots for their for, for their sport and and make sure that 
they are recognized, seen, talked to, talk, talk to as much as talked about. You know. So I have to ask you about these 19 games, and I want to stress on the 19 where you've been seven matches unbeaten as well. Uh, tell us stories from these games, how you've come together as a team individually. I mean, we spoke about growth yeah. as a player. But give us something that probably which is not there, which is meeting the public eye, and you know that's only within the team. Um, so I think once when when we started in December on the 27th is when the whole team got together, and uh, uh, our first aim was the uh, the the two exposure trips that were there in Indonesia and Hong Kong. Um, uh, but after that was the Hero Gold Cup, uh, which was very important for, for us as a team because that was the first time India was uh, organizing a tournament, Four Nation tournament. And uh, it was important for us to put up a good image of women's football in India because nothing of that sort had happened before. Um, but unfortunately, uh, maybe we took a lot of pressure um, and we uh, overthought th things and uh, obviously the whole AIFF was there which was also very uh, new for all of us. So and and considering uh, we were all such, uh, we had like the average age of the team is 21 and uh, to have uh, that sort of pressure uh, and uh, the whole, like the environment there was, um, I think we just took uh, too much pressure and that's why we didn't get the result that we wanted. Um, we lost against Nepal, which uh, which was like a heartbreak for all of us um, and, and a big shock. So once we stepped into uh, um, CEF, we had a point to prove against Nepal. And But the, the exposure that we had in Turkey was was when we... I like when I look back now, I feel that the Gold Cup, which was shock, we got was a good thing for us to regroup and uh, to start analyzing uh, e like individually uh, what went wrong. Um, and for me also, as one of the senior players in the team, uh, how do we get the team together? Uh, how do we push ourselves in the right direction? Because obviously, the whole thing was to, in, to prepare for CEF and uh, the Olympic qualifier. So Turkey was a big uh, turning point for all of us as a team, getting that uh, exposure against like teams like Romania and some of the top uh, top teams from Europe and uh, Asia. Um, that's where where our game changed. That's where we uh, believed in each other even more. Um, and obviously, you know, when we have uh, 20, 25 girls uh, for such a long time together, there are a lot of emotions. <laughs> and there are lot of, uh, too many, uh, too many emotions. I'd say just a roller coaster ride it was uh, the few of uh, the few months. But I think everything just came together right at the right time before SAF. And uh, getting that win was. You know, that was really special because you could see the emotion after the match, also how we celebrated um, after winning the CEF uh, tournament. I think in the entire exposure trip, that was the match that we will always look back to, the final match of CEF against Nepal. In Nepal. Because, yeah, in and in Nepal, because the stadium was fully packed. Hmm. And we were playing and the entire stadium was chanting Nepal, Nepal, and you, we could hear uh, like you know, bad words for the team and for all the players who were playing I inside. Got, and so before them, I was doing the warm up. Um, so I did my warm up and was standing beside the goal. And Hanki Zin a ball mari me sir. Purposely. Huh? I don't know if it was. I was, I was facing the ground. Mm -hmm. Someone from uh, the crowd uh, threw the ball and hit my head. I didn't. I didn't say anything because I had already reacted in the uh, Bangladesh wale match. Me, I had a. A uh, little uh, thing with the one of the good Bangladesh players. That this is not the time to react. <laughs> Let me let's just win, and then after that we did what we did. <laughs> that that Nepal goal. Uh, after that goal, and yeah. probably the win also. Yeah. How much did the phone ring? Uh, how many people were getting in touch? What was the reaction like? The aftermath. After that. I think it was crazy. I had never seen such a huge turnout of people wishing the women's team, con wish, uh, women's team, congratulating them and talking about how the women's team played. So uh, recently, I saw a new post where someone who nobody knows out of the blue, he's actually doing analysis of the entire team, who's taken the most number of shots, who's done most number and of I assists. I think the video of was, her goal, the, the uh, free kick, was the most viewed uh, video of uh, the post by uh, Indian football. Uh, on Instagram, that itself is. You can look into that camera and say thank you. Congratulations! <laughs> uh, we just put you on the map. <laughs>
today also i i was i walked by and there was a neighbor around, uh, there was a neighbor i walked into and she was like you know my husband had got to the office and that he was watching this video his office mates uh, showed him this video and he came back and he did not know who i was and that uh, i was their neighbor so that uh, so that lady she was like i told my husband that this is dalima chibber and like you know she stays right next to so i was like that was something really nice that everybody in delhi like even a normal um, multinational companies people are sitting and watching that football video even though even though not they're not football fans but everybody has seen that video and yeah. everybody has seen the emotions that we've shared and like you know that video of our winning where we're running around with the flag it's been it's been crazy i think it's the overall when i look back i just feel that we have change the perspective of women's football and that's the most satisfying thing so what was uh, the perspective before that that uh, the girls can't play football or uh, uh, it's just maybe something that people like to play just as a hobby uh, but never saw it uh, as something professional uh, that the players can take up professionally and uh, and what we can do at international level then i mean i don't think a lot of people believed in us that we could achieve something at international level um, qualifying for the f- uh, to the second round was uh, a his- history that we created we goal difference from yeah team. we yeah and uh, i mean obviously that hurts but uh, i think draw uh, to uh, to be leading against myanmar twice in the, in the game was which is uh, myanmar is a much superior side technically they were much superior and to be leading against them uh, itself speaks a lot um, that we played with so much heart and we were, because we were playing for something that is more than just the game it was something that we wanted to prove they uh, we wanted to put uh, women's football like you said in, uh, on the world map and i think we did that at uh, quite an to quite an extent and uh, hopefully this will continue and even the score line like 3-3 yeah. it was like a 3-3 draw and i think the score line in itself says a lot of yeah. things we were we were doing a live blog for the super cup semi final and we actually the and i slept for 5 minutes <laughs> <laughs> i was like yeah what's going on here we so really should have done it for yeah, yeah. for the afternoon game <laughs> instead of the night game it was so much more fun to watch I, from uh, what you're saying about uh, burma myanmar being more technically evolved yeah. ob- it's obvious from watching them play that they get to play a lot more football so they have a academy set up all the players stay in the academy throughout the year uh, they train uh, all year so obviously that makes a difference you're training twice or thrice a day staying in the academy together uh, with four months together with this te- with this young team uh, we we improved drastically mm-hmm. and uh, so we can only imagine if that sort of setup was there in india uh, how so, much so yeah so my question to you was going to be we been talking quite often in the recent past watching the men's team yeah. about uh, theoretically evolving an indian style of play yeah. watching you guys now i've seen you playing for india for the last maybe 8 yeah, 8 10 eight, years, 10 years. Yeah. there is a definite sort of or now hmm. confidence holding the ball in the middle taking your time sure the decision making will improve yeah. the the hmm. stability yeah. or the composure will come right. but is there a conscious effort because of the new coach or whatever to play a little more possession football to show the some of the technical ability that the new girls now have yeah, yeah. Yeah. so the message from the coach is very clear uh uh she wants us to play attacking football she wants us to get the ball in the middle have the confidence to play out from the back and even though there's a lot of pressure obviously the other teams are also reading our game they would start pr- put, putting uh, pressure up front but she still wants us to play out from she's the back she's letting you make mistakes she's saying yeah yeah, right. yeah that's important and that gives confidence to us as players also to believe in ourselves that obviously you don't want to make a mistake but uh, that but it's okay to make a mistake because football is about making mistakes and uh, but i think um, even from my experience in in uk with west ham it was the same and that gives like from my personal experience that really helps me because um i i have to trust my players i have to trust my defender that she'll be able to uh, play out from the back when i play to her so uh, that gives us for, and especially for the uh, young girls it's important that they get that sort of confidence from from this young age Hmm. I think that is one reason why we've improved drastically because she's always emphasized on building up the game from the behind. So you must have seen like there are some of the goals that we have actually the ball started from our keeper yeah. till the striker and the striker even against Romania, the good yeah. team like Romania, we like let's play attacking football, let's not defend. Uh, even against them in the second half, if you see, we we didn't get our wingers at the back. We were still playing for uh, for uh, four one. 
4-3-3, but one uh, defending midfielder, two attacking midfielder. It was midfielder. unfortunate that we missed out on two to three chances against Romania. Yeah. The In the second half, we had uh, chances to score against them also. Yeah, Sharda, you were saying something. Yeah, I just had a question, uh, you know, for uh, for Aditi and for and for Dalima. I wanted to ask them that uh, you at this sort of it's it's quite astonishing that this year has been so you know you're completely high profile. You've changed everything in terms of how, what Indian women's football is looked at. This is the year of the women's World Cup um, as well. So, what is your aspiration now? What are you trying to you know where are you trying to reach as a, as a as a squad? What do you want to do? Uh, if, say, this kind of situation continues, that you get enough international matches to play, you have enough competitions, you have a better league system, uh, you know, one level below international, where do you think you would like to go? What do you think you would like to do? What is your, what are your, do you have any thoughts on that, your, your dreams? So, I'll, I, w I would say that the ultimate goal for us to reach the FIFA World Cup, whether it be in the coming five years, in the coming eight years or ten years, so, like right now, the, I think the main goal in India should be to inspire as many girls as we can to take up football as a sport. Because only when uh, they see football as a career in India, only then they will take up the sport. And the more girls we have taking up the sport, it will just add to the national team and the betterment of the national team. And the, uh, the immediate goal right now for us is since the AFC Asian qualifiers would be approaching by the end of this year or maybe next year, I think, our um, first main goal is to be one of the best five teams in the Asia. And only when we do that, we can think of going ahead to the FIFA World Cup. Yeah, because I think we've already proved our dominance at uh, SAF region. And now I think the next step should be to have a good position in Asia and then obviously look for, look for other uh, um, achievements. But I think uh, immediate goal um, for to answer your question should be uh, or would be to uh, to have a dominance and in the at Asia level at least. If you had to, if you had to, uh, you know, sort of do a rough ballpark figure, how many uh, women are sort of playing in contention for sort of spots at, at, in the national team? You know, if just look around you, what would you say? Other is that number which, which as Dalima saying, it should increase, it should become much more. What is the a general figure? I have no idea, but what I've seen from my experience over the last few years. Uh, that the number of girls that have started playing football has definitely increased um, and uh, there are a lot more tournaments at school level uh, but it's important that it is converted into a more professional sort of setup it's a longer league and uh, more professional uh, but I, I, I just can't uh, give you a number because I have no idea the number of girls that but uh, just generally I see that the more and more schools uh, especially in Delhi and NCA um, have started making a girls football team, have started participating in football tournaments, uh, which shows, and, and even with the nationals, uh, earlier it was basically Manipur that dominated the nationals. Um, they always won the nationals. But last, uh, I think two years ago, um, Tamil Nadu out of nowhere won the league. They defeated Manipur. Uh, Under and 14, Chandigarh was the Chandigarh was the winner. Chandigarh so it, it winners. shows that the women's football is growing in different areas. It's not just restricted to northeast anymore. Uh, it's so I wanted to ask about this briefly. You can just keep going. But uh, the current national squad, where are these women coming from? What yeah, is the sort of like? What is the mix it's like? You earlier, guys are Delhi boys. earlier in the first eleven, it was basically like maybe nine Manipur girls and it maybe just me and one or two other uh, girls from other states. But now it's more of a mix. There are girls about uh, three. It's, it's still more uh, Manipur, but uh, we've got three girls from Tamil Nadu. We've got two of us from Delhi. Uh, one from Haryana. One from Haryana. And so one it's from West Bengal as well. Yeah, uh, she's the defending midfielder Sangeeta, who's like the engine of our uh, uh, team, more, very important position. Uh, so, it's, and when it's you say like it used to be, it this used to be wasn't like way back. No, it was no, a couple three, of years four years ago. ago yeah. Yeah. A year back only, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> a year back, yeah. 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 <laughs> so, so rapid strides are being made, I think, yeah. uh, at least at the elite level. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe what's happening lower down. And I think, and it's important to uh, give credit to AIFF also for doing this because yeah. obviously they do come under a lot of. Uh, Abhishek, uh, yeah. Yeah, Abhishek, Abhishek is the one who's been planning been, yes, your entire, yes. you know, he's calendar. He's the one. Yeah, he's the one who's uh, put uh, put the team <laughs> for, you, for uh, <laughs> Spain. Also, there's an exposure trip in Spain last year, yeah. um, and then this uh, the four uh, four months. So 
I mean, it's important to give credit to them also for for doing a good job. You spoke about uh, when you were talking to Sharda. You said yeah. it's very important that you inspire others to take up right. the sport. <laughs> In this journey so far, or if I may say these 19 mm. matches of 2019 so yeah. far, have you come across other girls who've come and said, "Look, uh, you inspired me in whichever way"? Is there a story you can narrate? Yeah. So um, uh, uh, yesterday only, I came across a message on Twitter which said that, uh, you know, uh, I have a daughter, and my daughter really wants to be like you. She inspires to play like you, and now she's playing football. Like she start, she started playing football, and she's practicing with an academy. me and and i felt really good about that and so there on instagram also i got a lot of messages saying that like you know i look at you as a role model and i really want to take up the sport you guys are doing so well our women's team is so good so i think that really feels good and that has happened only with the kind of exposure that we've got over the mm. four months and the amount of publicity that has been done about the women's team and i'll tell you a story uh, so i've started my own football academy for girls she kicks and uh, so there's a um, there's a mom from chennai who's been calling us continuously <laughs> and she's like I I want to send my girl to she kicks and I want her to play football. I was like we we don't have an academy in Chennai. We don't have a residential setup. How is she going to manage? Oh, no no, I'll get my kid to uh, Delhi. I'll stay, we'll stay in the hotel, we'll give trials and all that. Please realize we don't we don't have that sort of setup, but that just shows so much of eagerness from the parents, which is a huge thing because the parents ultimately are the ones who are gonna help the kids pursue their uh, passion. So um, that, that I mean, just hearing about it because I just came back and uh, that uh, my the team uh, was telling me about it. I think that that is great. Uh, at least we it's not just restricted to Delhi and uh, I mean the initiative. It's spreading uh, around the country and it's great to see that we could. inspire uh, some of the girls and influence the parents to uh, to let them let the girls play football and take it up as a profession i mean in 1998 i was covering the world cup for my school paper so tab se kida hai jo there is there is a guy called sepp blatter who is running fifa for a long yeah, time yeah, yeah. he said the only smart thing he's ever said in his life <laughs> the the future of football is feminine uh it's been 20 years we finally realize that perhaps hmm. that is a direction that we want to chase hmm. i think we can wrap up because we've gone on for sharda while. one question sharda uh, i was reading up uh, just before the show and uh, their coach had said that uh, currently we're 63 and the aim is that to very quickly drop into the top 30 or if not top 30 top 20 yeah. and she's saying we can reach 63 with this you know this stop gap arrangement ki ek saal mein char mahine mein humne puri zor laga di then we can if we actually plan for the next 3 4 years we can easily get into 20 and you suppose that's where the entire ecosystem not just AIFF and the players but the entire ecosystem needs to come together and help them give that push Yeah absolutely you know that there has to be sort of literally now this is like a time you have to grab on to that people are paying attention of all kinds i mean uh, it was interesting to hear aditi talk about this mother in tamil nadu her name is not any jacob by any chance and her daughter is not nathania nathania yeah because because literally there's a story of this girl that we found out her name is nathania she's about 12 now or 13 maybe and her mother's been looking for a residential academy for girls uh, for football Uh, and she's looking everywhere. So I sh- I'll actually give her your uh, academy's address and number. Maybe it's the same person. You know, to find out that because there are these there are these little pockets, but they haven't been connected so far. And this is probably the best time for people to actually then be connected. So I was just thinking about the Dalima's goal. I think it it is like uh, you know Deepa uh, Karmakar pulling off the Prodino and becoming the big moment of Indian gymnastics. That's like it's probably your goal is probably like the big moment for. for women's uh, football it's probably something that will just kick on from here but again this is the time that everyone has to push you know you have to have push at 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 every level not just at the top of the international team but even below this is the time you can jump on to it and say listen let let's get a let's get a league or unified one league working for the women's it be far simpler to handle than the men's for sure ये यूनिफाइड लीग बड़ा टची टॉपिक है तो हम उस पर जाएंगे नहीं बट द थिंग इज जस्ट बिफोर वी एंड द शो फॉर ऑल द पीपल हु आर वाचिंग राइट नाउ वे कैन वी सी यू प्लेइंग नाउ नेक्स्ट इन द कमिंग फ्यू मंथ्स इफ यू टेल अस uh so uh, in may i will be playing for gokulam in the indian women's league and uh, i guess the matches will be going live on facebook on the indian football page so that is where you can catch me in action 
I will be doing my rehab. <laughs> <laughs> I will join you. Yeah. <laughs> you five years. <laughs> yeah. So you can catch me on uh, doing my rehab, uh, but after that I should be back. So, so the Indian Women's League gets underway uh, on what date? The fifth of May. Fifth of May yeah. for a month. Yeah. And ten teams. Yeah. Uh, more than ten teams. So I this suppose. is where the best uh, girls. Of Indian football will be playing. Nah, all the national team players will be playing, and and obviously the other girls also will be. So there'll be a lot of talent to watch out for. <laughs> hmm. Aditi, all the very best with your rehab. Thank you. Dalima, all the very best for that uh, game. You. And in case you're scoring a goal from Tamil Nadu to <laughs> to uh, you know for your for your team now, if you're shooting those long ranges yeah. and all, I got my geography all wrong right. <laughs> 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 But, uh, Bangalore to Tamil Nadu <laughs> or Karnataka to Tamil Nadu, Gokula, but just do let us know Gokula. because yeah. then we'll we'll get Gokula first news. in Kerala, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so clearly, I will never really cut out to be a journalist. But uh, guys, thank you so much for taking thank our time you. and joining thank us. Sharda, thank, thank you so, so much, much for taking our time and uh, joining thank us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for calling me. Good luck, girls. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. We thank hope you enjoyed another episode of 420 Grams. Remember, it is Indian football that we follow on a weekly basis. If you want to hear, talk, understand whatever it is about the Indian game, the beautiful game in India. This is your one-stop shop. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.